Hi everyone, I'm gonna make um, a couple of videos regarding Dalmatics. There's a lot of information to cover, so um, if I go back and forth or I seem to miss something, just um, keep watching and hopefully I cover it. Um, there are two different kinds of Dalmatics, Roman and Gothic. And um, I have made for myself quick note sheets, they look like this, that outline some of the more standard um, options that you have for Dalmatics and tunics. Um, one thing to note about the difference between a Dalmatic and a tunic is a Dalmatic is gonna be shorter in its length and it's also going to be a little wider. So when it comes to the sleeves, the sleeves are gonna be like thinner this way and longer and the tunic itself is going to go longer. All right, that is. Be, um, there's a reason for that. Uh, it has to do with a bishop putting all the vestments on, and you want to be able to see the different layers. So um, that would be the biggest difference between a dalmatic and a tunic. Um, some other things to make it more obvious who's the deacon and who's the subdeacon might be um, like on a dalmatic. Here's these are just pictures of Roman dalmatics. But all on Dalmatic, you're going to see two bars, okay? And on a tunic, if you had a Dalmatic and a tunic next to each other, you would do, you would do a singular bar, okay, just up top. Um, neither of those is actually necessary. There's a lot of leeway in the styling when it comes to a Dalmatic. You can have no bars. You can have no, you know, no glue going down the sides. Like, you don't have to have any of those things. It just all depends on the priest and what they want, or the deacon, of course, and what they want. Um, but you can do it a number of ways, okay? Um, I will I will be including these um, quick note pages in the book. I had tried to use a computer program to put all my little notes in there, neat and nice and all that, and it did not work. I wasn't able to move very far with that. So I drew them in because I needed the quick notes for myself. Um, okay, so let's then talk differences between a Gothic and a Roman. So a couple of differences between a Gothic and a Roman would be that a Roman, of course, has usually has galoon around the entire outside edge and the neck. You know, a Gothic doesn't have any of that. Also, the Gothic lengths are going to be different than the um, Roman lengths. And the average, the average standard placement of bars is going to be a little bit different. But typically, we're really talking like the same general um, layout for, for both. Okay, Roman or, or Gothic. Okay. So one thing that gets asked a lot is, do you close the sleeves? Um, there are going to be some priests who want the sleeves closed. I would uh, urge you to urge them not to choose that because closing the sleeves is seriously difficult work. Um, having it go to here, you know, come sleeve closed and then go to here and, and you know, open up is just ridiculously difficult to make it look right. So um, unless you want to be fiddling around with that for hours, uh, I would suggest you just urge them away from that. There are some options that I give them. And I always say, you know, the sisters at the house of Ephesus don't close the sleeves. And um, that's something that usually gets their attention because the sisters at the house of Ephesus are kind of the standard. So if they don't do it, then you know, priests don't necessarily want that, you know. Um, the other thing I tell them is there are options that we can, um, so for example, if you have a bar on a sleeve, see this? So an option would be is they could have no bars on a sleeve or they could have bars on a sleeve, you see like this. And in this picture, you can see that I have um, a wide, a wide piece of galoon, probably more like a one inch or one and an eighth inch, and then you have your thin galoon that goes around the edge. Okay, your half inch. So what I would do is I would take 
a half inch piece of glue and I would take a one inch piece of glue, the matching glue. Probably each piece would probably be about four inches, okay? And then I'd fold it in half and stitch it together, okay? Fold it in half like, um, like where you see the nice side out, okay? Let me see if I can get a piece of glue. You take a piece of glue and here's the nice side, you know, get about four inches of it. And then I would fold it in half like this, okay? See, like this. And I'd stitch this edge and stitch this edge. And then what you can do is you can place it right where your bar is, right here, and attach one side of the sleeve with the other side of the sleeve. You tuck it into that half inch galoon. Now, if you're not doing a half inch glue on the side, you can still do that. You just have to tuck it into the, the seam. All right. Um, and the same with this half inch galoon on the edge. You do the same thing so that it just looks seamless. It goes from one inch through to one inch and half inch through to half inch. And what it does is that holds that sleeve together with like a gap and um, it keeps the sleeve from going every which way. All right. Kind of holds it on their arm. And a lot of guys like the idea of that. Now you can carry that further. You could do um, galoon pieces every so often. You could do galoon piece here if they wanted it kind of like a, you know, together right here. You could do a gluing piece there. Um, all these are options. Um, a lot of guys don't actually mind it being just completely open and it just draping. Um, another option is you go ahead and, and stitch, stitch it as if it was going to be open. All right, and then you put it together and you blind stitch it, hand stitch it from here to here. Now that sounds like more work, but I don't think it is. Not considering how difficult it is to put those sleeves together and then split it and have, you know, going from being the same one to a different, you know, that that cut there. If you don't believe me, try it. It's it's pretty difficult. So those are just some basics when it comes to dalmatics. And um I'm going to be going through in the next video I'll go through um, how you actually construct a Dalmatic. Um, I have, I don't work on Dalmatics like super often. I don't have one every, um, like several a year or anything like that. Um, I might have one priest decide that he wants a Dalmatic. So I thought here I have these Dalmatics. <laughs> you can tell I didn't prepare for the video. Um, here I have these Dalmatics that I'm making. I should probably stop and make a video and let you guys see what goes into making a Dalmatic so that um, it can kind of help you out when you're when you're going to make these. So I hope that was really helpful. If you have any questions, uh, message me or let me know and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks. Have a great day.